Hi, I'm Eric Dibble, Regional Sales Manager at HF Scientific. Today, we will be going over how to do a reagent change on HF Scientific's MCX monochloramine analyzer. We'll start on the screen. To put the analyzer into a service mode, press the mode button once. The screen will prompt you that if you press enter, you will abort your current reading, which is fine while we change the reagents. So we'll press the enter button. This will bring up a prime option, a user calibration option, and a reagent status option. Just leave the screen as is for the next step. The next step is to remove the old bottles from the analyzer. We try to hold the cap of the bottle and twist the bottle out to avoid twisting the lines. The next part is very important. This is flushing the lines. You will take the syringe that was provided with your analyzer and fill the syringe with DI water. You will push the DI water through the bottom of the tube and into the optical block. For this procedure, you want to remove the light shield so you can see inside of the optical block. Place the lure lock at the end of the syringe into the bottom of the sample tube. Using the plunger, push the water into the line. While you're doing this, you will see the water inside the optical block start to rise. We like to flush the lines for a couple reasons. The liquid line being full will help us with our prime and will also keep the tubes clean to maximize their lifespan. After we flush the buffer line, we will flush the chlorinating solution line, which is the smallest cap. Again, you're gonna feel some resistance when you're pushing through. Don't push too hard, but you wanna give it a, make sure you're seeing the water inside your, your optical block and there's no leaks on any of the connections. The final line we'll flush is the indicating solution line. On the indicator solution, may be harder to push since the solution is very viscous. You should feel the same resistance as you felt in the first two flushes, but if you push too hard on the indicator solution, you can compromise the integrity of the line. So be careful as you're pushing to just put very even pressure on it. Again, make sure that your, your optical block is filling up. You can see the water going through. We're checking all of our connections to make sure there are no leaks. After the first five minutes, we will again flush all three lines with DI water to flush out anything that may be in the lines. After that, we will grab our three new reagents and begin the installation process. We will begin by replacing our buffer solution. What we like to do is hold the bottle and put the line in, and then hold the cap in one place and twist the bottle into the cap. This will ensure that we're not twisting any of our lines inside the bottle. Place the reagent bottle into its spot. You can see here that the bottle will be blue with the dot, will go into the line that has the blue on the optical block. The next solution we'll put in is our indicator solution. Again, the yellow dot will match up with the yellow plastic. Again, hold the cap and twist the bottle into place. The last reagent we'll put in is our chlorinating solution. Again, the red dot to the red plastic. Hold the cap and twist the bottle into place. Once all three reagent bottles are in, we're ready to start our priming process. We'll start by priming our buffer solution. On the screen, press the enter button to select prime. Use the down arrow to go down to buffer and click hit the enter button to prime the buffer. You will see water being pulled into the sample and you will see the pump hammer start to go down on the buffer solution. Allow the buffer solution to go through a full prime, which is about 90 seconds. Once the buffer solution has been primed, we'll move on to the chlorinating solution. So again, go to your screen and toggle down to prime chlorinating solution and hit the enter button. The cuvette will fill up about halfway. What this helps us do is it allows us to see inside the cuvette. And as this solution is being pumped into the cell, we can watch that level rise inside the cuvette. What you want to watch for while you're priming your reagents is that you have liquid to start moving through the lines and into the cuvette. As you can see, 
the little air bubbles will travel through the line and eventually make it into the cuvette. This is a great way to troubleshoot and make sure that you're getting your reagents into the sample cell. The final reagent that we will prime is our indicating solution. The indicating solution is a tan color and it's the most viscous of all three reagents. We really want to make sure that we're seeing that tan color move all the way through the reagent lines and into the sample cell. So go up to your top screen, toggle down to prime indicator and hit the enter button. When the indicator is priming, it's very easy to see as the dark color moves through the lines and into the sample cell. If at the end of the priming cycle, which is about 90 seconds, you do not see the indicator all the way into the optical block, you may need to prime the unit again. So follow the same process, go to the screen, toggle down to prime, and prime the indicator again. After you have primed all three reagents, you can replace the light shield, then hit the exit button twice to put the unit back into a normal operation. If you have the unit in a continuous operation mode, the unit will automatically go into another 15 minute cycle. If you have the unit in grab sample mode, you will again have to prompt the analyzer as to which parameter you'd like to read. That concludes the reagent change video on HF Scientific's MCX monochloramine analyzer. Thank you for watching.